Hello and welcome back to International Journeyman here with Australia. Last time, of course, we got unceremoniously dumped out of the Asian Cup at the semi-final stage. And so today we begin an absurdly long World Cup qualification campaign. Can we take Australia to the World Cup once again? Or will some good performances at least help us to get a job somewhere where we have a better chance of actually winning something? Now it's fair to say, as averagely poor as we've been so far, that the standard of our group here is not exactly high. Bahrain are the highest ranked side at 77th, and Cambodia, Lebanon and Hong Kong are ranked lowest still. This is of course only the second round of qualification, win this and we qualify for the third, more difficult final stage. We ourselves are now ranked 49th in the world by the way, which is reasonable. A few wins might help it up further. We clearly need to freshen up the squad a bit and I think now is the time for Garan Kual. He replaces Martin Boyle. Kai Rolls of Hearts comes in for an injured Milos Dejanek and I recall a now injury free Brad Smith over Callum Elder. I would like to call up the ridiculously named regen Ryan Ryan who the game says is Australian but he refuses as he'd rather wait until he can play for England. At least he's honest. Also shout out to Australia's real life World Cup performances far and above our own partially as they were able to start a guy up front who isn't even in the database because he plays in Japan. Anyway we can win our opening match against Lebanon that should hopefully set the tone. Smith and Rolls come into the starting lineup. It takes us a good 20 minutes to actually do anything, but then we come forward and Economides sends in Goodwin who breaks the deadlock. It then turns into the McLaren show as he converts a penalty, then minutes later heads in a third, and then at the start of the second half he completes his hat-trick. We, of course, can't keep a clean sheet, but then Kual comes off the bench to score a scintillating first Australia goal, hopefully the first of many. 5-1, a decent start. And indeed he is on the score sheet again a few days later in a solid 3-0 friendly win over Venezuela. We've actually managed to keep a clean sheet against a team ranked in the top 60. This is probably actually our single best performance of the save so far. Ahead of the next round of fixtures in October, the big news is that Harry Suter, by far our best centre back, has done his cruciate ligament again and is out for seven months. Which is obviously bad, but it won't actually rule him out of a tournament. Ryan Strain is also out, so Kai Rolls and Nathaniel Atkinson make it a hearts double to replace them. In all likelihood, it probably won't be an issue against Cambodia, and indeed, we get an 8 nil win. Good win with a hat trick this time. As the highest ranked team in the group, theoretically Bahrain will be our toughest test. And uh, yeah, we're not exactly terrible, but it's a test we fail. The best of the chances all fall to Bahrain, who have three really good opportunities. Thankfully, Matt Ryan actually plays well and they don't end up scoring, but sadly, neither do we. We have plenty of moments, but nothing really as clear cut as them. I had, you know, been enjoying winning some games. Clearly too many. We topped the group, but uh, it sure would be impressive if we failed to qualify here. Clearly we need a youthful boost and the game offers me the chance to manage the under 23s at the under 23s Asian Cup. Now this is seemingly the route into the Olympics, which of course we do need to win, not that we will with Australia, but still. If nothing else, it would be a chance to see the young talent coming through. Anyway, before that near certain excitement, we have some more qualifiers and we actually get to do a team meeting, which peps the squad up a bit. And then we go and beat Hong Kong 4-0, a great result that keeps us well in control. And then we go and beat Lebanon again as well and, oh sorry, that's just what I expected to write. We actually lose 2-1 at home to Lebanon in one of the absolute worst results I've ever had on the game. Quite how we lose, I don't know. McLaren misses a penalty and if this was a club side, Matt Ryan's contract would be getting terminated. Absolutely unforgivable though. We actually might not qualify at this rate and unsurprisingly the ranking takes a hit. Oh well, at least I have the distraction of the under 23s to come and uh oh. I definitely clicked on take charge but old Tony Vidma here just picks the squad anyway. I suppose we'll leave him to it. Seems unfair to sack him after what I've just overseen. And yeah, rightly so, as he just goes and wins the whole thing. Well done, Tony. I will absolutely be taking charge of the Olympics, though, if we're still here, and a promising future for the Socceroos, nevertheless. 
and it's one we should make use of for the March fixtures. I call up Hearts DM Cameron Devlin, centre-back Alexander Popovich who did well with the under-23s and former Spurs goalkeeper Thomas Glover to freshen things up. We have a friendly with Uzbekistan first and I opt to put Glover straight in from the start due to Matt Ryan's consistent awfulness. And he keeps a clean sheet on his debut as a very good performance nets us a 2-0 win. More of this please. We obviously have to beat Cambodia a few days later to maintain our qualification hopes. And thankfully we do with a crushing 5-0 win. Economidis got injured in the week leading up to the game and Matthew Lecky gets a goal in his absence. If we can beat Hong Kong and Bahrain in June we should still be okay. Before the next matches, SI release a major update which allegedly fixes defenders, amongst other things, so hopefully this helps. Our participation in the Olympics is also confirmed, and I absolutely pressed take control, so hopefully this time it actually works. Belgium, Ivory Coast and Jamaica make up the rest of the group. We welcome back Harry Suter for these crunch qualification matches, although Tom Rogic misses out. And then third choice keeper Mark Birigetti decides to just retire before the first game. Hopefully not an omen. Hong Kong are first. If we don't win, we're cooked. And thankfully we do 3-0. Glover is now fully our number one by the way. Ryan has used up all of his credit. We go top of the group again but the final game against Bahrain is now winner takes all. Okay, right, let's just not screw it up. Here's the team, don't let me down. We come forwards three minutes in with Goodwin finding McLaren who gets fouled in the box. It's a penalty and a red card and McLaren gets up to sink the spot kick. 1-0 and a man advantage. Did this just instantly become anticlimactic? We rattle the woodwork before really getting into the groove. Goodwin wins it on the right and squares it to McGree to make it two. In the second half, Leckie finds McGree, who allows McLaren to get a brace. And then with minutes left, Leckie pulls it back for McLaren to calmly get himself another hat-trick. 4-0, job done, extremely easily. We win the group and qualify for the final stage. Although upon looking at the table, it transpires we would have qualified in second anyway as one of the best runners up, with Bahrain getting to go through regardless. Uh, maybe a slight impact on the dramatic ending there. In the final round group, we get the UAE, China, Qatar, Kuwait and ugh, Japan. Normally we need to get into the top two of this to qualify for the World Cup, but this indicates it's now just the top four, I guess because of the stupid expansion to 48 teams, so actually that's a lot easier. Crystal Palace then come back for the second time in the save to offer an interview. Take a hint guys, but while I'm obviously not looking to take a club job, another international job is certainly an option with three other tournaments happening this summer. New Zealand gets stunned by Papua New Guinea in the Oceania Nations Cup before it's third time lucky for England as they finally win a final on penalties in the Euros against France and Brazil likewise claim the Copa America beating guest team Mexico and these result in an absolute job centre slaughter. Now obviously we have failed to achieve what we need here in Asia but we may be better served by leaving and coming back later when there's more regens or with someone else entirely like South Korea because I can't see us winning the Asian Cup next time around. And besides, despite what the game literally said, Tony's still gonna name the Olympic squad so we won't be getting a shot at that. I should have just sacked him really. Despite everything we haven't achieved in our time in charge, we are still extremely sought after for some reason with offers from three different continents. Belgium and Holland are the best offers overall with the World Cup in two years but my eye is drawn by Mexico and the USA. Their managers have departed after their performances in the Copa America, a tournament that they are literally just guest teams in, and there is another Gold Cup already next year and I'd like to start winning some things, so this is mighty tempting. And not to forget the fact they're both hosting the next World Cup as well. Mexico have a great squad but also tend to have excellent regens, so we could always go there later on if needed. The USA though, it's a bit of a golden generation and I would like to have a go at managing them. They've won the Gold Cup twice in a row now and are now hosting it so you know what i think it's time to play some soccer ball see you next time folks